after the success of <laughs> UAVs, drones, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, do you think that UAVs will eventually make combat pilots redundant? Not, not in the near term. Mm -hmm. the, um, it, the reason to use a remotely piloted aircraft, we call them remotely piloted instead of drones because drone gives this idea of something wandering around on its own, mm -hmm. making mechanical decisions mm -hmm. about life and death, and that is just not the way it is. Uh, we have an awful lot of people who are operating as part of that remotely piloted system. A pilot, a sensor operator, a mission commander, an intelligence analyst, all connected to a much broader command and control and intelligence analysis um, uh, mm -hmm. organization that monitors everything that aircraft does. There's much more control over an RPA than there's over a manned platform. Um, and so, but but the, the reason to use a remotely piloted aircraft is if it's better to do the job with one than with a manned platform. So if you're, the reason we started with intelligence collection is because you don't have to worry about the human body being a limitation. Mm -hmm. If you're going to fly a U-2 with somebody in a pressure suit, about 12 hours is all the human body can handle before you really need to give it a break. You can fly a Global Hawk for 36 hours. It's basically how long can the airplane fly before the oil system gives you a problem. And so the, that, that is a good use of a remotely piloted aircraft, to, to monitor something, to stare at a spot on the ground, to fly a predictable track and collect signals or, or collect pictures. Uh, so that's where we started the remotely piloted aircraft. There are other uses for them that make eminent sense, but there are some things that wouldn't make sense. I, like? I, well, we're not ready probably to fly your mom on an RPA <laughs> or to take your kids on vacation on one. Uh, we probably... I don't, I don't think anybody would want No, that. Not, not yet. I, I, we're not ready for nuclear weapons on a remotely pilot aircraft. I'm not ready for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's other things with a, that a remotely piloted aircraft just can't realistically do yet. It's very hard to replace the sensor that's on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, creating situational awareness with the human brain is remarkably easy. Creating it with a mechanical sensor, no matter what that sensor is, is going to take us a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, we can just digest so much information so quickly by looking out of a cockpit mm -hmm. uh, and digesting the signals you see inside the cockpit that is very, very hard for a platform platform to do on its own. So it, it makes sense to expand operations in those areas where it makes spend, sense to span, expand operations. Less than 10% of our aircraft right now are remotely piloted aircraft. Mm -hmm. And that number will grow, but it won't grow exponentially soon. And what percentage of operations are UVA, UAVs? It depends on the mission area. Okay. For, for intelligence collection, it's a pretty good percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, for example, if you looked at what's going on in Iraq and Syria, probably, oh, I would guess, 80 to 85% mm -hmm. of the intelligence collection is being done by remotely piloted aircraft. Mm -hmm. 